Joined now by Rod Woodhouse of Yerby Stud, and we're about to see the end of an era, the end of a massive uh, operation and project for Rod as far as harness racing goes with Yerby Stud. To tell us more, Rod, you're selling up. Yeah, look, uh, old age has got me, mate. Uh, you know, <laughs> um, I've got four kids and none of them are interested. I um, Two boys that are in the game, they, um, they're they quite happy doing what they're doing. And Chris and Alison, uh, they seem pretty entrenched where they are, so they're not about to move. Even if it's too much work, Chris does. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'd rather do it now, Adam, while I'm still healthy rather than, you know, as Chris says, when you're old and... They're feeding you through a straw, so to speak. Yeah. So. It's been such a big part of your life, and I want to talk about that in a moment. But yeah. the timing of it, I've got I've got to ask the question because others will, um, and the rumour mill will start. Is it linked to the talk about a stallion levy, or, or is it just a, a time and place in life for you? Well, the stallion levy um, gave me a, a lot of thought, a lot of time to think. But not for what you think, because I think it's a great thing. And I would have been tempted, because I've got a lot of colonial stallions, I would have, um, I think it's going to be shot in the arm for the industry. So I was toing and froing whether I try and go another four or five years or what. But, you know, I, I, I haven't seen my grandkids. So, you know, I want to see them. I want to see Sam play footy and Katie ride. And, you know, so you can't have it always. So. But I, I think it's it's a great it, – it, look, it's going to be some early pain, but I think long-term gain. And I'm the first to say at the start, when it came out, I wasn't in favour of it. I just thought taxing something that's already under pressure is not a good economical way of doing things. But when you stop and think about it, if we'd have done it 20 years ago, where would we be today? You know, that's that's how I thought about it. And I thought, look, it's just something we have to do. So, it, but explain, explain to me why, when you got your head around it, um, what changed your whole take on it? Well, when I thought about it, I thought over the last 10 years, we've probably sent hundreds of millions of dollars offshore. Now, it's just not sustainable. If we keep doing that, we're going to end up down the Googler. We won't have an industry. So we just, we have to bite the bullet sooner or later and say, okay, we're going to put our shoulder to the wheel. It's going to hurt some people, but in the long run, I think it will be to the benefit of everybody because things will snowball. You know, your prize money will go up. Yeah, yeah, yes. Because everything revolves around what people have got to spend. So your yearling sales should improve. Your stains, you know, that are here. Like take King of Swing, for instance. Now, if he could get the best mares that are about because people are going that way rather than going for the imported stains, it, it, it'll be off. He'll be a champion. But it's just... It's, it's something that has to be done, mate. It's it's the missing link, and it's it's arguably one of the greatest single differences between the thoroughbreds and harness in this part of the world, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. Like, I just wish we'd have done it, you know, ten years ago. Okay. Um, but it's look, we've, we've got to do it sooner or later, Adam, or we won't have an industry. All right. Well, let's get into into the history of what has been a well, really, a lifelong project for you. And it, it started in 85, officially opened in 86, Yerby, with yourself and the late, uh, the late uh, Ian Walsh. And you hit the ground running. That, um, that I guess, trailblazing stallion of yours, if you like, uh, and Jeremy Lobel, um, well, along comes Joe Fesh and away you go. Yeah, yeah, that was the start. Um, you know, we... Uh, we, we Always had a, always loved the industry, you know, because we both drove, not with much success, but uh, we both enjoyed it. And so it just grew from there because we were both in the same, we both shared the same business together. And um, Ian bought the block next door virtually, only one lane over. So we were always great mates right up until the day he died, um, which, you know, after that we carried on. We've got, it's just, the, the, the thing's grown. But when things grow, sometimes, you know, you've got to make a decision of, When's enough, you know, and that's what we're, that's where we're at now. Absolutely. Um, some of the other wonderful stallions um, to have been made available through Yerby. I mean, a few that spring to mind, obviously Genghis Khan, who yeah. uh, did such a terrific job. And, and then there's, of course, the likes of your village Jaspers and Arbor Operatives and Mr. Biggs who were yeah. available to your, um, you know, to your clientele as well. 
Yeah, yeah. Look, um, we've been very fortunate that we've been able to stand some really well-bred stains and very well-credentialed stains. But um, yeah, so um, you know, I, I, I'm wrapped in the stains we've got now, and that's why I've made a commitment to the owners of the stains that I will let them know on the 21st of May, because if I don't sell it before the 21st of May, then I've made a commitment to them to uh, go again next year because they need some certainty where they're going to place their stands. So yeah. they're fair to me, so I'm just trying to be fair to them. Yeah, look, that's and that's immensely to your credit. Um, just going back to the colonial bread part, and you talked about how uh, what a believer and supporter you, you've tried your best to to help the colonial breads. Lenny the Shark, Lombo Pocket Watch, I mean, champions on the racetrack, and well, Lenny the Shark yet to see, but Lombo Pocket Watch has certainly had some success. But... We've got to keep trying, don't we? You mentioned King of Swing, but we've almost got a the next couple of years is crucial. Crucial with your uh, the likes of Ride High, Poster Boy, Soho Tribeca, these sorts of horses, isn't it? We've got to we've got to support them. Um, you know, I, like I talk about um, this slots thing that they're going to bring out. I, I'd I'd like to see them take it further and, and, and say in three years' time. The only horses that are uh, that can go into the slots are horses that are bred by Australian stands, you know. So that people, and it's a two million dollar race they're proposing. So that's they're the sort of things we need to do to really put people to really think seriously about going because we the, the colonial stand really doesn't get the cream of the crop when it comes to broodmares. No, and it's it's interesting. I was actually chatting with Anthony Butt on on Melbourne Radio about it um, during the week and. He was saying this same point. 15 or 20 years ago, yes, we should have been trying to head in that direction, but it was hard to put hand on heart and say we had the depth in our breeding. But there is no argument now, is there? Like no. the, Amer- the best American blood is through so many of our top horses. Well, they're, they're, now they're out here buying our horses to race in America. So that tells you how the, the, the standard that we've created. Um yeah, look, and the times we're running now at Menangle, they're more than competitive with what they're running in, in um, you know, the Meadowlands and that. You know, you, you've got, you know, you could have a horse that could run 153 here. Once you'd say, well, he'll just win, but you can't guarantee it these days. Why can't a horse like King of Swing with his temperament, with his breeding, with his record on the racetracks and the times he's run, why can't he be the next Christian Cullen in this part of the world? Exactly. Yep. Look, Tiger Tara, you know, he was an out and out champion. He was in my eyes, and Kevin Pesudo probably wouldn't like me to hear him say this, but he wasn't he wasn't as good as Lazarus, but he was probably the next best thing. Yeah, he certainly was. Um can't uh, wrap it up without talking about the team. I mean, Diane, your partner, such a, a huge part of the operation. But Roger Strong has been um, you know, a backbone and a long, long-serving stud master for you as well. A terrific bloke and a wonderful horseman. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm very, very lucky to have the staff that I have. You know, um, without them, the same as any business, you just can't be successful. Uh, you know. Oh, good on you. Look, thanks for telling us a little bit behind it. Um, the reasons behind it. Uh, at ultimately, family have got to come first, and that's a decision you're making. And well, we we now sit back. It's not that long away is it uh, may 21 you said is the line in the sand but you're in a headspace where you want to sell so i hope from your own point of view that um that you can get the offer you want to do the deal yeah i think it will i think it will sell because we've had a lot of interest already you know um nutrient are selling it with mark barton and sally douglas they're, they're heading that up so yeah i'm confident that it will sell but if it doesn't you know it doesn't worry me i um I I'll, I'll be still. I'll be still about. I'll, I'll always have a horse. You know, I mightn't be working. That Chris might be doing that for me. But yeah. Uh, good stuff. Thanks so much for the background. Thanks for the update on it all, Rod. And we wish you the best of luck. Pleasure. See you, Adam.